Okay, so you're traveling to a really warm country. I'll say Muscat Oman comes to mind. And you're thinking what you're going to put on. T-shirts and shorts, surely. But one of your friends thought, let's go in these instead. After all, it was lovely when we went skiing the last time in the Alps. Well, that exactly is ridiculous <laughs> by definition. And that's why the ills of duplitecture is just around us. In fact, duplitecture as a word is a fusion of duplicates and architecture. And if you ask my opinion, um, a lot of buildings in hot, humid, developing countries have embraced this. Uh, you could say culturally, you could say by way of design. And the ills, partly, you could ask me, is contributing perhaps more to global warming in terms of building implications than any other factor, if, in my opinion, in that context. If I look at these buildings, or if we looked at them, you might perhaps say, nothing wrong with them. I mean, they look similar. Um, you know, they have high glazing percentages. They look nice, and I agree, they look nice. Until perhaps I told you that the one on the left is Sepulto Towers in Lagos, Nigeria, while the one on the right, of course, we know that's London. The ones on the right, of course, are suitable for their, their client. They are lovely, they're fantastic designs. They let as much light and heat in as should be in a temperate condition. Let's just say in Lagos, you are creating vertical gas chambers and ovens with that concept because you are running temperatures 26 and that's not even factoring the heat index. In fact, you might argue that the heat load or the cooling load of these buildings, um, if you perhaps just strip them of their glazing, you might begin to cut them by percentages without doing any other thing. Okay, let's just say the one at the top is London and the one at the bottom is Lagos. Shall we agree? No, scrap that. It's actually the other way around. Now you see, when you need a second look to differentiate between the architecture of a temperate climate and the architecture of a, of a hot, humid climate, you are in trouble. Effectively, what you have is building adaptations that haven't quite worked. Lagos is not the only climb that is doing this. Um, if you ask me, uh, I was saying to my wife, perhaps we might, I might scramble these tags and get our three-year-old Gracie to, to, you know, to shake, shake it up and try to place them wherever she wished. And there are only a very few things more random than that. And see whether daddy can place them back without looking at the original file. The fact is, duplitecture is not just a Lagos problem. If you went from Cairo and traveled through the coastline, we're doing just a photo analysis with one of my colleagues, all the way to, to Cape Town, you see buildings that if we actually did that experiment, many would struggle to put them where they belong because they're similar. Yet, from Cairo down to, to Cape Town, you would have gone through several different climates and microclimates. For example, if we look at these two buildings, and again, there's nothing wrong with them looking similar just by looking at them. Well, the one on the left is Astana, Kazakhstan. The, the lowest temperatures recorded is, I think, minus 62. And Lagos, of course, um, is in the late 20s to 30s. The shape and the form for the Palace of Peace and Reconciliation as designed is perfect, allowing as much solar insulation, trapping as much heat, perfect for Astana. But let's just say in Lagos, while it snows in Astana, if I came in any day and told you that, hey, it snowed in Lagos, just know that Armageddon has happened and we're no longer here. <laughs> Yet, they have such similarities. Um, I was talking to a friend that maybe we should start asking, what would nature have done here? Um, maybe we should start asking a few more questions about why is it that temperate plants look different from tropical plants? Well, they will and they should, because common sense is very common in that community, perhaps not in other climates. You get where I'm going. Because if you find out that these plants in the temperate region, they're trying to keep heat in, while the ones in the tropic have so much heat, they have to spread out. In fact, if you look at the needle-like leaves of the pine, which we have here, and of course we have in Astana as well, they're trying to cluster together. They're trying to limit exposure. They're trying to keep in the heat in. And the ones that have even leaves, as we saw in the earlier slot, in this earlier shot, try to get rid of them at the coldest temperatures, all to survive. 
But then you look at the cocoa yam leaf in Lagos saying, here we are, so much sunlight. We just have to, you know, have a party while we shield our younger ones and we need to provide room for evapotranspiration because there's so much heat and there's so much uh, warmth that we need to get rid of them. Unfortunately, this hasn't quite influenced our architecture as much as it should. So while on the left-hand side, once again, you have the Astana skyline, the Civic Center complex in Lagos fits in quite nicely if you were to just put it across to the next skyline. It's just that while the people in Astana are wearing their coats at this time of the year to keep with the cold weather, the guys in Lagos, let's just say sometimes, they take extreme steps to keep cold. Um, when I was taking this shot, the, original, the, the gentleman who was helping me out, he had to step away from the chillers, because you know what happens at the back of air conditioners, they are very warm. So essentially what you have is these vertical oceans, like vertical ovens, getting, you know, soaking up the heat and then spreading it back into the street. And everybody's doing that. And we're saying that perhaps if we got everybody to stop doing this, perhaps you might drop the average temperatures by a few, a few cents. The copying of designs is not because of money, definitely not, because I mean, Design cost is 5 10% at the most in terms of the overall project cost. Besides, you still have to localize and adapt them, you know, get a project architect, etc. So it's not money. So what is it then? When I was taking this shot, I asked the guys at the old IMB building I showed earlier. I said, what happened if you turned up to work with your, without your suits, if you dress in T-shirts, and you know, if you dress appropriate for the climate? They say, we'll probably get sacked. If we turned up for the interview, that way we wouldn't get the job. So there's something of a status, cultural, international style that is causing this. We know that climate change is real. Well, most of us. And then, of course, we know that the implications, perhaps for Lagos, is quite damning when you consider that it's a coastal town as well at, and at risk. It's not just the economy. It's not just the environment. There's also the idea of fading cultures. Things, art, design, concept, vernacular, heritage styles that, you know, with all the tapestry of it wrapped into that has been developed over years, being scrapped suddenly. So what's the solution? Well, fortunately, uh, Janai and several people who are working on this area have told us that nature can be our model, our measure, and our mentor. So if we look at the tropical rainforest, we can learn so much from the emergent layer, the canopy layer, all the way to the forest floor, working together in a climb that actually works for everybody. In fact, when we tried a, a, a rainforesticity model, we were thinking of, okay, how will buildings shade themselves, shade each other, some commensalism, some level of symbiosis. The street view was actually like walking again in the tropical rainforest, just that you're walking around, amongst buildings, not trees. But you get where it's going in terms of the, the shading and the thermal comfort that it achieves. Fortunately, the IMB building has been remodeled. And frankly, I was really impressed when I saw the picture by the team that did it in the mode of what the rainforest would have done. We know that the, 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 the project, the Isge Tower in Zimbabwe, saves a whole lot of money. Why? Because these guys taught them, the Mick Piazza team, that there is a way you can actually ventilate by drawing in cold air from the base and letting the hot, warm air go up to the top. And if you let the valves, the right measure, the right places, just like the ants will do in this termite mount, this building here could actually save, as they reported, over 35% you know, total energy savings in cooling. One of my students, and I think some of my students may be in the audience, said, well, she's from, actually from Harare. She said, Anthony, I never knew that when we saw that building and the way it was really working, we really wondered why isn't that the template for all buildings moving forward? How come we found a few others still copying duplitectures? I said, well, if you have find out the answer, come tell me, because I'm asking the same questions. For me, nature never ceases to amaze us. And that's Antelope Canyon, by the way. No columns, no beams. But there you have some of the most ingenious structural design just by the forces of wind and pressure. You have so many factors going on. I mean, the Geico tells us that adhesives don't need to be poisonous, don't need to be loaded with chemicals. The, the, the polar bear tip tells us that insulation can be by form and texture and by having a black body skin. Um, um, the, the bullet train has been inspired by birds and several animals. Um, you have 
countless things to copy from. Why copy where you do, from where you don't belong or where it doesn't fit? The Beatles tell us that forest fires shouldn't be, a, you know, shouldn't be a problem. We can smell it. Likewise, your fire detectors should. And several other inspirational things that nature can tell us. That we have no reason in any climate to go and copy from a different climate thinking that it will make sense. So, of course, anytime we're going on holidays in Muscat, definitely, like the guys who said, why don't we use what we use for skiing in the Alps? Well, don't do that because it's wrong. Thanks for listening. <laughs>